to welcome I'd like to welcome each and everyone to another episode of the CS show. My name is Elizabeth Senna and I am your host for today. The CS show is kind kissy by the woman of God, Prophetess Rhoda Anna of Manifestation of Holiness. And Manifestation of Holiness, we meet here on the same Zoom platform from Monday through Friday for morning devotion or midnight row. So if you are a prayer warrior and if you want to always be on fire, if you want to, if you are a radical Christian, then this is the right place to be, Manifestation of Holiness. You can join us at 12 a.m. midnight at US. And also, if you are in Ghana, it will be 4 a.m. If you are in Europe, it will be 6 a.m. If you are in the UK, 5 a.m. In Japan, it's going to be 12 p.m. And also in Lebanon, it will be 6, 7 a.m. So kindly join us. And also, I would like to appreciate uh, our wonderful listeners. You have been doing a very great job. We are so grateful to have you always. Uh, with me here, I have one of my guests. I can see one of my guests and I would like to uh, introduce my guest for today. He has been with us before and today he's here to give us more. In fact, he's here to elaborate on a lot of issues that we have to know because when it comes to fire, uh, sometimes people I tend to think that, okay, people think to be a little bit frightened, but today I have two guests. One has been here and contributed, but today he's also on the show as a guest. So without wasting much time, I would like to introduce Mr. Michael Adeba. Mr. Michael is a, um, he holds a position uh, as, a, as a, a rescue officer at the Golden Star Wasamai Limited, Ghana. And today he's here to discuss more issues concerning fire safety. And also I have Cletus. I don't know if Mr. Cletus is the one with the techno, uh, but okay. Mr. Cletus Weather Yita, he works at the Ghana National Fire Service and holds the position as a station officer class two. And he's also going to give us all. In fact, he said that he has a lot of things in his defreezer and today he wants to defrost it and give us more so that we can, you know, take it a lot of things home. So I have two guests on the show today. Mr. Michael, you are so welcome. If you can hear me, you are so welcome. Thank you, my dear lady. And I greetings to all listeners. But today, because I've been with you for some time, I've taught you some certain things. I'll leave the battle to Cletus to start. And then where I'm supposed to come in, I'll join Cletus, then we all share ideas together. Right. Thank you. Okay. Um, I think... But, Cletus... but um, a golden star was a mines. It's not the mine. It's at a take a champion. Golden oh, star okay. was a mines. All right, okay. Thank you for the correction. Uh, Mr. Cletus, if you can hear me, can you please unmute yourself? Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Okay, all right. You are so welcome. You've been with Thank us you. before, but today you are here as one of our guests and we are so happy to have you. Sure. Because we know you have a lot of things for us. We know... <laughs> Uh, you you had so many things in the different and today you you want us to defrost it and then you know do justice to it together so uh, what do you have for us today well today um we'll learn a little bit about causes of fire mm -hmm. then uh, causes of vehicle fires as well as i will add something up to what michael gave you the last time on uh, gas fires Okay. So when there is time, maybe we'll add more. But for now, we'll take up this three. 
All right. Wonderful. Yeah. yeah. Okay. To uh, our dear listeners, please uh, ask the show before my guest starts speaking. I would like to say that as the show is going on, uh, kindly mute your background because uh, we are live on Facebook and we wouldn't want to have any distractions. So if your background is not okay, you will have to mute yourself. And when it's time to ask questions or if you want to uh, make a submission, if you want to make a contribution, you can kindly raise your hand up and then I will give you the opportunity to do so. Uh, Mr. Cletus. Yes, please. You have three things for us today. Yeah. Uh, can you kindly, you know, take us through it? Okay. So we start by asking ourselves the causes of fire, general causes of fire. We have so many causes of fire, some of which are one, maybe over aging cables or wires. In our homes or in our offices, the lifespan of every wiring to a building should take about 15 to 20 years. Mm. But more often, you will see that the building or the premises, the wires are over 100 years or more. Mm. And so you realize that the insulation cables then become damaging and rusting. Then you see us using solar tape to be taping them here and there. Mm. As a result, it will end up, when the wires come together, it will end up causing fire. Fire, yeah. So the next thing is about naked wires. Hmm. When you observe that wires are naked, the best thing okay. to do is to place them. Hmm. But more often what we do, we don't replace them. Hmm. We pass wires that are naked under our carpet, under our stuffing chairs. And you see, when the, the wires are passed under the carpet, at the mm -hmm. end of the day, when it is heated, it remember the insulation being rubber. Mm. The insulation being rubber over time exposes the wires. Mm. Yeah. I think my guest is having a problem with the network. We feel that we want to... Um, make the room neat. As a result, we want to hide the wires under the carpet or pass them through the furniture. And so when, when the insulation becomes overcharged, at the end of the day, and heated, it can just start to fire. Mm. And the next thing we'll have is faulty electrical equipment. Assuming that somebody has a television and that there is a black line in the middle of the telly, it mm. means that it's faulty. But okay. what we do is that you will see one will decide that sometimes when you hit it by the side, the full screen will come. When it happens that way, it means that the dry joints are not working inside the pillow. So the mm -hmm. best thing for us to always do is we remove or call an, a qualified electrician to come around and then replace or take the telly out and go and work on it. Because you hitting all the time, when you are not doing, your children do the same thing. They will also go there. When they own it, it's not coming. They will hit the side. Mm. When they hit the side and they come along the line, the wires will now break up in the telly, and then it will set fire. Mm. So mostly when we see such things within our houses, the best thing for us to do is to just off the telly or whatever gadget it is, and then you call a qualified electrician or come a person and who can come and touch it. The yeah. next thing we have is loose connections. Mm. You will see a socket that is hanging. It has been removed from the wall. <laughs> or maybe even your iron clock. Mm. The wire, one is torn, even though it is having contact, but it's torn. You feel because you can use it, you are not bothered. Mm. You keep on using it every time. The day it will just tear off, that very day you may not be there. Maybe mm. I came to you, you are just escorting me out. You think that, oh, you are just leaving me out. You come back and continue. Before you come, it has sparked fire. And at the end of the day, you will lose everything in the room. So mostly yeah. when we see some of these things in our rooms, in our offices, please let's do well to make sure that we fix them back at the right way. 
Yeah. And not to think that because we can use them, we'll end up leaving them that way. Hmm. Add on. Add on is about the building that we have. We buy so many electrical gadgets into our houses. Sometimes we don't consider the wiring that we have in the house. Hmm. Wiring determines the number of gadgets you can use at a time. So if you want to use so many gadgets, mostly hmm. you should have a three-phase uh, hmm. uh, means. And then maybe they will connect um, a four joint fuse for you. So that mm. in case of anything, it can take almost every gadget that you have, even if you want to use them at the same time. But mm. if you don't consider all these things and you go to the house, because some of our electricians are not even qualified, you don't know who wired the house for the person. Now mm. you go and connect up these things, and then it will just take off as if an explosion. Yeah. Then the whole fire is just burning everywhere. So mm. let's always try to consider or even ask if we've rented a place or it belongs to somebody. Let's know how the wiring system is done before yeah. we get, especially the gadgets that take so many um, uh, oh. voltage yeah. so that those things all will always help us. Another yeah. thing is overloading of socket. Every socket in Ghana, I don't know of that place, but in Ghana here, every socket, the voltage that is in it that comes out is about 230 240 or 250 volts. Hmm. And so if you are connecting something into that socket, you must add up all the numbers to see whether what you are putting in there is more than the voltage that is coming. So hmm. if you don't consider that and you fix things that are more than the voltage that is supposed to come out, at the end of the day, it will cause a lot of damage. It will cause fire. Heat, okay. it will so mostly, let's try to consider some of these things that we do. When we are fixing them, let's fix them well so mm -hmm. that we don't end up loading the socket as much. Mm -hmm. if, is, if there is a need for you to add more socket or extension cord, we should try and do such a thing, but not to just plug the whole thing at one place. You have an iron there. You have a heater there. The same everything. place your rice cooker. Everything is done there. It shouldn't be done that way. Mm -hmm. And the next thing we'll have is unapproved electrical gadgets. We have so many gadgets that we sell in the market. Most of those gadgets are coming from either China or somewhere. Mm. And the Ghana Standard Authority has That's not okay. authorized them. There is no stamp, there is nothing in it. But mm. sometimes before they come, they are cheap in the market. So we are all eager to go and buy. Get them. <laughs> going to buy these gadgets, we don't even know how quality they are. Mm. And we bring them and connect them to our various light and socket, and it end up just creating so many problems for us. So mm. once we have no idea about some of these things, if you don't have any idea and you are going to buy some of these things, it is advisable for you to get close to mm. people who have ideas about these gadgets. Then they'll lead you to go and buy whatever that you want. Mm. So that at the end of the day, you will not have such challenges in your house. Hmm. Another thing that I want to talk about is improper handling of candles in our homes. Okay. If the electricity goes off, we are owning the candle. The candle is placed directly on the carpet on the floor, or it is directly closer to curtains. Which can cause fire. Hmm. Can cause fire. Or mostly the best way for you to handle candle is to have this 5-5 five -five plate or any metal plate. You place the candle in it. Hmm. then it will be on that thing. When it burns and you even sleep, it will end up on the bowl and that will happen. Yeah. But when hmm. you put it on any other thing, like a rubber bowl or something, it will melt and then if there is any combustible around that area, then it will end up taking it up. Yeah. So let's try to avoid some of these things. Smoking hmm. on bed. It's not. You're sleeping and you are smoking on the bed at the same time. What happens is maybe as a result of smoking, you pass on and sleep. You slept off. And you see, because you are lying down, maybe you smoke and then you turn yes. the cigarette at the back. There is a curtain directly at your back. Maybe mm. when you took it back, you didn't notice that the fire caught yeah. the curtain. Mm. Mm. And then while you just smoke, you didn't even finish, you slept, and the candle, uh, the cigar fell, mm. fell on the ground. At the end of the day, you only wake up they will only come and pick ashes in the room. You yourself, you will burn because you wouldn't even know when they... Know that, yeah. Mm. So uh, let's have some of these things. Before you continue, I see that uh, our uh, other 
guest Michael Adeba's hand is up, so I want him to contribute. All right. uh, Michael, please, if you can hear my, me. Mine is not a contribution, but it's just a question I wanted to ask our, okay. our, our speaker. Hmm. Assuming okay. I've traveled, let's say, from Sakradi to Accra, and I need a kettle, and I've, I've been to the market, who will I ask that, Masa, is this a good one authorized by standard board or what? Who, who moves that contact? Because maybe you may not get somebody at the market to ask those questions. Mm -hmm. How will a layman get to know that these are inferior and then these are good things? You see, so like we are saying, when you are going to buy, once you don't even have an idea about it, I don't even expect you to go to the market yourself because this is something that you are going to use. Don't just go to the market because they are selling the thing you want to buy. Look for somebody who knows much about the gadget. Maybe another person has the same gadget in his house or her house, and you need to have one. So maybe when you even ask and you are going to the market, maybe due to a certain label that is on it or a certain tag that is on it, when you go and you happen to get the same thing, then mm -hmm. you know that oh, this is exactly what I saw from Michael's place. But if you decide that you are just traveling from Accra because you want to come and buy that thing, it may even happen that you didn't come because of that. But you just passed by and then that thing attracted you in a shop. And you decided to stop and buy. Or but is there just... no other way to, you know, get, uh, instead of, you know, sending someone, because you we all know that it can be costly. If you want to send uh, somebody who works in that field, you have to pay. But is there no any other way? I, I uh, Maybe before you take my question, I would like to let Sister Paulina come in. I see her hand up. Okay, thank you very much, Senna, for the great work you're doing. And then um, thank you, um, Station of the Class to uh, Wyndham. Okay, so I uh, just a little contribution to the question um, Michael asked. Michael asked. So, um, I, I think that Yita said the standard boards, okay, yeah. so they are responsible for approving some of these things. So once it is an authentic source, they have this logo or they, 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 they have this um, embossment that shows that this thing has been approved by the standard board or the standards authority. And so if they are doing their work very well, there shouldn't be a problem for me to struggle to buy something from the market. Mm -hmm. I should be able to go to the market you know, with ease to say, that, okay, this one is an embossment coming from the standard board. Otherwise, then the, there is a duty of the, the Ghana National Fire Service together with other agencies who are responsible for these things. Mm. Let the information go out there. Yeah. Let the education go out there so that the public is aware yeah. that we are buying these things yeah. and we are getting the best you know, mm. for, for our money. The little I want to say. Thank you, Estelina. That was a very powerful contribution. Um, Maybe Michael wants to say something again. So, Michael, you can. Yeah, yeah. Uh, what I wanted to say is uh, outside Ghana, it's not like, let's say, Ghana. Mm. Typical example, let's say, if you are manufacturing a phone, techno, to, let's say, to UK or the US, you do one for them, they will give you a spec, and then you do, they will test and get to know that to fit their condition before. But what about Ghana? Ghana, we don't have those things. So the advice that we are, I would say, is whenever that we are buying things in the market, at least we should try and then check on those things. And then there's a question I wanted to ask Claire mm. to say. It's about wiring, that wiring that you're talking about. Mm. I'm a okay. tenant. Mm -hmm. Somebody has bought this. Uh, there's a burden for more, let's say, they, they wired it for more about 10, about 100 years, or let's say 50 years. Am okay. I the one going to keep those electrical uh, uh, wiring or that kind of thing? It's just a question I'm asking because some of us may not have even to rent in Ghana here is very difficult. Hmm. How can somebody go and then change all these wires who were wired about 50, 60 years ago? How can somebody do that? So, Michael, if, if you are going, if you rented the place and you think that now at the end of the day, if you don't leave, I'm not asking you to do it on your own. If you can do it, farewell. But if you cannot do it, you move to another place that you think that will help you. Because one, if you don't do that, you lose all that you have. Because when there is fire, you may not pick any single thing from the room. <laughs> so if, yeah. you think, if, if you think that that will not help you, you relocate to another place that you think that will help you. 
Because if you use money to buy all those gadgets and at the end of the day, you decide that you don't have money to change those wires, so you leave there that way. It is the same thing that will bring fire. Maybe you may not even survive yourself. <laughs> to be able to buy new ones. <laughs> and then, then, then the, last, the last question that I wanted to ask our brother is, uh, he talked something about we passing through wires in our room. Mm. Some used to pass it through uh, under the concrete in the yeah. room. Yes. Oh. What about those ones too? Does that one also cause fire outbreak in the room? So it, 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 it depends on how it is done. Where I live right now, it belongs to the government. The, the wiring, the earth wire, all was passed through the concrete. The buildings are over 100 years. When I went and lived there, what I did is that I live at the second floor. The admin officer lives at the first floor. So I have done rewiring from the down to my place. So I don't use that old wiring because the little brick, it is always fire. And when it even happens that way too, it consumes a lot of electricity. It means that along the line, the earth wire will not be working. Because when there is a breakage within the concrete, how would you know? So even though they did it through that, along the line, people who came and lived there should have known to change. But at the end of the day, sometimes this basic knowledge, it's not everybody who knows that if you're wiring a place after 15, 20 years, you need to rewire. And that is why when the fire safety department goes out there, and they train or educate people, they come out with all these ideas. But people will hear them, but they feel that, oh, after all, the wires have not done anything. Why would I change? So this is what happens. Um, before, uh, OK, uh, Michael, please, you can, uh, you can. I just gave, I just gave him a thumb up. I just gave him a thumb up. OK. <laughs> All right, uh, 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 wonderful listeners, I would like to uh, say that if you just joined us, this is a serious show. It is Kai Ketsi by the Woman of God, Prophetess Rhoda of Manifestation of Holiness. So uh, if you, uh, you love to pray, if you are a radical Christian, if you're a prayer warrior, then you should join us on this same Zoom platform. We meet here Monday to fr uh, through Friday for our morning devotion and also a uh, midnight roll. And also, we also meet here every Mondays, Thursdays, Fridays for our Zion Eye and also our Bible discussion. So if you, you love to, you know, know more about the Bible, if you love to pray, you can also join us 12 p.m. U.S. Eastern Time, 4 p.m. in Ghana, 5 p.m. in UK, 6 p.m. in Europe, 7 p.m. In, uh, in Lebanon, and it's going to be 1 a.m. in Japan. Um, Cletus, yes. I think it's, this, this is a very interesting discussion that we are having. Uh, I, I want to ask, what about you know the wiring that they do in markets in Ghana? Because you know there are so many times that you see fire outbreak in Market Square and all those places and sometimes people say that this is not caused by them it's due to how the the wiring was done is there any solution to that problem because it has become something serious in various parts in ghana is there yeah. how how should the market people how should they handle it that part of uh, uh, the place that they sell because it's not them that did the wiring and like you are saying that we need to find out and all that who should they you know, talk to for them to know exactly how to go about it in order not to cause fire outbreak there. So on recent times, if you look at the rampant fire outbreaks in Ghana here, mm. we are most fortunate, Koforidia market, we've not experienced that because within the market premises, we have fire posts, we have fire people in the market. That is where they work to. So their work is to always go around. So in collaboration with the assembly, what we did was to make sure that all wires, you see, sometimes somebody will have a problem at the shop and it, what he does is, oh, Michael Adeba is an electrician. Maybe mm -hmm. he's even a park electrician. He will just go and bring him and he will tap some illegal connection from somewhere and then that is all. Once he, he or she has light, he's not bothered. But what we did was that we collaborated with the assembly 
and they decided to change all the wiring. As of now, they've not finished. They have an old market and a new market. They are still working on it. And so I have realized that most of the markets, it is always about fire. Recently, you could see what happened at Makwala yeah. as a result of a wire that was connected from somewhere to the air condition or whatever that it is. So mm. sometimes some of these things too, I think we, the fire service too, we need to be up and doing. The reason is, you see the safety officers, that particular building, I had the PRO making a statement that they don't even have a permit. They don't, the, the staircase is not even standard. Whose duty is to make sure that this is done? You, that should not even come up at the first place because mm. we have to go and check all those things. Yeah. So that if the thing, because we have the powers, if it happens that the premises has no all the safety measures that are supposed to be put in place, we have the right to close down the premises. And so if we don't do that, and at the end of the day, the fires are just here and there, yeah. the law is there. The assemblies must collaborate because you take tax from all these women in the market. Yeah. They pay every now and then. So the assemblies collaborate with the service. They look for more qualified electricians. Then mm. they'll do rewiring for the entire place. Because most of these markets, since the inception of the market, they've not changed the wiring. So if somebody has a problem within his premises, he only looks for an electrician to just come and do it. Maybe I call somebody and the person came. You also just decide, oh, my place, I have this problem. Yes, mm. oh, I call this electrician sometimes. Oh, no boy, it doesn't charge much. Mm. Cheap things are expensive. Instead of you to look for somebody who can do it well, and so the other person, he charged too much. So you just go and bring a roadside person. Hmm. Maybe you don't even know who he is. He will just come and connect anything. You have the light, all right. You've closed and gone home. And then maybe some mounts have chewed two of the wires together. Before you come, it has taken over the whole market. Hmm. And it's the same thing that you see most of the people who cook in the market here, we've placed some measures by them. There is no any light system around where they are. Mm. Because if you leave them, even the smoke that goes up alone can mm. always melt the insulation of the wires. And mm. it will end up just touching up. And maybe the time it will happen, it's nobody will the market. It yeah. will be left with the watchman alone. And mm. the watchman cannot be walking throughout the night. Maybe he may pass somewhere. The next 10 minutes, the fire started from there. Yeah. And so that will be another solution that I think other places must take up with the assembles and the, the mm. market women as, as a whole. Yeah, you did mention about uh, in the, one of the markets, I, I think you said, uh, you mentioned a market that you took care of, your uh, company took care of, but uh, I want to ask, so because you have done it, I mean, your company or maybe your fire department was the one that took care of it. Uh, my question now is that, is there any, uh, you know, this fire detectors, like this kind of thing that you put on the roof so that when there is a smoke, you would detect that there is fire. Because what I'm saying is that, you know, like the market square, we have all kind of people that, there are people that cook and sell, whilst people sell clothes and all that. Then when it comes to people who cook and sell, and maybe there is a, 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 a burning, you know, food or something, and maybe that person didn't have intention of, you know, he or she didn't go and bring a electrician who is not really capable, but rather it was due to the cooking that the fire, you know, came. Is there anything that would dictate the fire so that that person can be able to quench it on his or her own? Is there any but, such of fire? But now we don't have such a, you see, where you cook mostly, you would have put in a smoke detector. But the mm. problem is that when you put such a thing by where we cook, mm. mostly smoke, it will be sounding profusely. So you cannot put a smoke detector in the kitchen or where exactly you cook because smoke comes out continuously. Yeah. Yeah. So when you put such a thing there, it will be sounding. And so the best thing we have for now are fire extinguishers. We okay. make sure that every store has a fire extinguisher. Yeah. If you say you wouldn't buy, you don't know what will happen to you next. If I have and I didn't come, and now it has happened to your place, where next do you go? So mm -hmm. everybody is supposed to have that fire extinguisher. And that fire extinguisher, what it can only do is like a first aid. 
when you see the fire at the initial stage, that is the only time you can use the fire extinguisher. Because when the yeah. fire becomes big, even the fire tender comes, they will come and fight that fire and the water will even finish. They have to call for a second pump to come and assist. So the fire extinguisher can only help you when the fire starts at the initial stage where you just saw it, you can use the extinguisher to fight. But we don't have that system where it could sound us or something that will be. We don't have it for now. Okay. Um, wonderful listeners, we are discussing fire safety. With me here, I have uh, Mr. Cletus Wadam. Please forgive me, pardon me for how I pronounce your name. No worries. <laughs> and also I have uh, another guest, uh, Michael Adeba. He has been here before and they are, you know, taking us through fire safety, how we should be able to prevent fire outbreak in our homes, market square, you know, where uh, we find ourselves doing things like cooking and all that, that can cause fire. We should be able to know the roots and also how we can be able to help the government not to put a lot of money on this. Uh, fire outbreaks. Uh, uh, listeners, if you just joined, I would also like to say that uh, this is Manifestation of Holiness Zoom platform, and you are here on the CS show. The CS show is kind of see by the one of God, Prophetess Rhoda, Anna of Manifestation of Holiness. Here we love to pray. We love to, we, we are so filled with the spirit of God because we are radicals for Jesus. So if you also love to pray, if you are a radical Christian, then you are at the right place. Join us here on this same Zoom platform, Mondays, Thursdays, Fridays for our Zaya and also our Bible discussion. And the time is 12 p.m. U.S. Eastern time. It is 4 p.m. in Ghana, 5 p.m. in UK, 6 p.m. in Europe. 7 p.m. in Lebanon, and it's going to be uh, 1 a.m. in Japan. So kindly join us. Uh, also, uh, I would like to appreciate uh, my sister, Paulina. Uh, she went and then she just came. I would like to appreciate my sister, Paulina, uh, for this uh, opportunity. And also our wonderful mommy, a woman of God, Prophetess Rhoda, God bless you. Uh, Michael, if you can hear me, do you have something more for us? Yeah, what, what I will add to what my brother just said was, uh, when it, mine is about the socket, the overloading of sockets. The last time I explained that, that when we are loading our sockets, mm. if the pots are four at least plug three and leave one mm. if the pots are four plug three and leave one mm. and then about uh the wiring that he's talking about i'll be very happy if we consider by taking off that of the under carpet wiring and then mm. it goes straight to uh the walls and then some paint also do catch fire in the room. Some paint, uh, example like oil paints. These mm -hmm. oil paints, okay. they uh, they do catch fire in the room. When there's an outbreak of fire, they also. So we should consider paint uh, with the paints that we use in our room. There's the letter that I'll add to where you have started now. As we go on, I'll add another to it. Okay, you said something. You did mention about under carpet. Is it like putting a wire under a carpet or? Can that you... is what my brother said. That is what my brother <laughs> said. <laughs> okay, so you are repeating what he said. Okay, so then let me go back to uh, uh, Cletus. The yeah. under carpet, what do you mean by that? Is it like putting a wire and then put yes, a carpet on it? Maybe the socket is far away from here and the television okay. is also on another side. So okay. he or she decides that he doesn't want the wire to be on the carpet. He wants his room to always look neat. So he's going to pass the wire under the carpet. So he's going to pass the wire under the carpet. Uh -huh. So when you do that, then it will come up. When it is heated,
Hello. I think there's a feedback. Uh, yeah, please, you can go ahead. Okay. So when when you pass the wire there and the wire end up getting heated, mm. you see the the remember the insulation has a rubber mm. over the exposing over time it will expose the wires. So mm. mostly it is not advisable. That is why he said we should just devoid of doing such a thing, not to even try it at all. If mm. you pass the wire through the wall, it is better. Then they'll use clips to hold it. But to pass it through the carpet is not the best way to. Advisable, okay. Uh, I have a, a question. What about you know? Okay. I know that... Another, another. I'm coming. I'm yeah. coming, my dear lady. Please go ahead, my dear lady. If I may come, and I want to add a little to the causes of fire. It's just one, arson, mm. Mm. arson. Yeah. Somebody, maybe I hate Paulina. What mm. Paulina is doing is disturbing me. So Paulina will go for let's say for all night. I'll just get to the house, throw a match onto his uh, mattress before Paulina realized that arson is also part of the cause of fire mm. at the house. Mm. Thank you. Um, I was uh, going to ask about people who charge their phone and then maybe laptops and other things, and then they leave the, the charger in the, the electrical appliances. It, 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 you know, we have all kind of things that we put in the, uh, the plug that you were talking about, the extension board and all that. But is it advisable that we leave them inside when we have finished charging? Because I know sure. a lot of us are victim of this. Myself, I do that sometimes. I leave them in the, in the extension board. So what you do is, if you know you are done, you just remove the plug from the socket. If it is in a, an extension cord, it doesn't matter. It, it can still be there, but remove it from the socket, from the wall. Okay. The best thing, anything at all that you use in your room, when you are leaving your house, the mm. best is when you off it, remove it. The reason is that sometimes, I don't know of that place here, when the light goes off, and sometimes it is coming, mm. it comes in excess. Okay. So if the, the, the fire is, the, the voltage is supposed to be 240 volts, mm -hmm. it can come more than that. And if it comes more than that, it will hit the... The, uh, the charger the, or the electric the cable, car, yeah. the, the cable that goes into it. Mm -hmm. And so at the end of the day, it will melt and you end up coming, the whole place is set on fire. Mm -hmm. So hopefully it's not advisable for you to leave. When you off it, just take it off from the socket. And that oh. is all. Okay, I see Michael's hand up. So Michael, please go ahead. Yeah, what, what I want to add is what in the socket was you're on bed. Recently, mm -hmm. our site, we buried an, an energetic guy and the cause is the electrical, that there's a phone that he was charging when he removed the phone and then mm -hmm. leave the, the charger on the bed. That is what those people mm. there were saying, but we are not sure. And the, these are what the doctors are saying. So it's an advice to all of us. After we are done with the charging, you just take off the mm. charger from the socket less than a week. Thank you. So it's an advice to all of us. After we are done with the charging, we take out the, the, the charger from the socket. Mm. Okay, so yeah, to add to some of the courses, we have, like Michael was saying, impro improper storage of highly inflammable liquids. Mm. Sometimes we'll go and buy paint, and then we'll buy this tap and town, and then lacquer. We'll come and put it in the room when we are not ready to use it, thinking that, oh, they said they are going to increase uh, <laughs> the price. So you go to buy them, you come to put them in the room. Those things all are highly inflammable uh, liquids. So when they are there for some time and they get, the pressure is always on it. It should be at a place where the air can always pass through. But when you put them within the room, one mm. day you come, the heat will stand on it and it will force the lid to open up. And mm. that is where it can easily explode and then turn to something else. The mm. same way with fuel. I know people who go to buy fuel when they hear they say tomorrow they are increasing fuel, he will fill his tank and still buy some, come and put it in the room. 
instead of even putting it at the back running or the, the corridor, <laughs> you will send it to the room and that maybe thieves will come and steal. You prefer to die with the, pay, the fuel than to leave it outside. Why should you even put fuel in your house? When you buy fuel and put in your house, the, the, the anticipation that you want to use it. You see, when you buy fuel, you see the, uh, the vapor that comes out. It yeah. seems it's called a uh, marriage or the marriage or something. Depending yeah. on the space that you live in a gallon mm. of fuel, when you leave the, the fuel, when you don't leave space in that gallon, the pressure keeps charging. Mm. And so when it charged that way, mostly the, 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 how do you call it? Even the cylinders that we use to buy the gas. Mm. When you buy, the white man is not a fool. Though. He knew why he did it such a way that there should be a gap. See, the when you even buy water or anything, they leave yeah. certain school. So yeah. that the, 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 the vapor can breathe on top of the gallon. But when mm. you fill it to the beam, then at the end of the day, when the, the, the vapor is trying to breathe and there is no space, whilst it's in the room for the first day, the second day, the third day, the pressure keeps on charging. So whilst it is charging, it will force, and you know the gallon is a rubber thing. So mm. it will become softer and then it will be forcing the lead because the heat is also coming. Maybe the sun is very hot. And so when it happens that way, it will force the lead and mm. then when it opens, it will explode. So let's avoid keeping things like this in the rooms too. Mm. Uh, I know that uh, in the Western world, they hardly use generators, but in Africa, we use generators a lot. Yeah. For example, when there is no light, there yeah. are people who, who have generators and maybe this one that is called plant or something. Uh, what can you say about that? Because I know people who use these generators, they usually buy petrol, as you are saying, they usually buy those things and then store them somewhere. What, yeah. what is the advice for them? You see, mostly you can buy the petrol, all right. There are people who have good places that they store their petrol. Maybe sometimes under a, a staircase, there is a lock. But you see, when you even lock it there too, because of the heat, so the best thing is when you are going to use the generator, just buy, come and put it inside. When it's finished, you know the amount of fuel that you use, unless maybe the lights comes back. So when it comes back and you have a car, pour the thing into your car. Now for you to leave it in the store, just like Michael was talking about us, maybe you even have a problem with somebody. He or she has realized that you bought fuel and you've left part of the fuel in the place there. Because the little fuel that will even pour on the ground, when you set a manches right now, it will just run like something. And it will set at the place. So mostly the generators that we use, some of us even put the generators in a room. <laughs> Myself, I used to put my generator in the garage. <laughs> then I'll connect when I'm going to sleep because I feel that I may sleep off and a thief will come and steal. Come and steal it. <laughs> the danger of putting generator into a garage is very wrong. And the okay. generator doesn't make noise. So I was thinking that when I leave it outside, theft, but somebody may come to steal it mm. because I may sleep off. And I can't sleep without fan. And so at the end of the day, the fan must be working. Now I'm going to put it in the garage. Before you realize, maybe the, the generator may heat or maybe a cable may get torn along the line and then it will touch another thing. Because sometimes at the neutral and life should not never come together. When it happens that way, that will become a short circuit and anything can happen. So <laughs> mostly we those using the generators, let's buy what we can use. Mm. When it is left, let's give it out down for us to say we are keeping it. It's not safe to keep fuel, no matter how it is. Okay. But it in the big drums, which are metal, it is mm. always different. But you must be sure that it is a place that you have security there. When mm. you don't have security, you just leave it somewhere. You think that, oh, where it is, is outside. Somebody will come and just be wicked to you without anything that you've done to he or she. <laughs> yeah, I think a lot of people are uh, in, in, in not so much in Western world, but I think in Africa, we, a lot of people use this generator. So yeah. it's good to, you know, take what our brother is saying, what our guest is saying, because those that are in Africa, 
at times, like he's saying, we, we think that putting it in the garage is the safest place. Myself, I, I, I used to do that <laughs> whenever I go to Ghana because everyone knows that things like that are easy to, you know, be stolen. So we usually keep them in the garage. But today, uh, we, our guest is telling us that we should always, you know, think about that fire outbreak. Um, I want to acknowledge one of our brother, Michael Bramford, Atta. he has been here also. I see his name. Uh, we, we are so happy to have you, Michael Bramford. Uh, I don't know if Michael Adeba wants to give us something small again. Please, if you have uh, questions, if you want to put any suggestion or anything, you can kindly unmute yourself and do that. All right, uh, Cletus, is there something you would like to, you know? Yes, I, I want to talk a little about car fires. Okay. So um, most often we have so many car fires mm -hmm. and uh, research shows that most of these fires our human behavior, mm. our negligence, our carelessness, arson, and all that. And so maybe you have a vehicle. The vehicle, there are so many, um, how do you call it? Uh, wires exposed in the engine. Mm. You are a driver. Now you've gone to the shop and then the electrician is trying to work on the vehicle for you. He is connecting and taping some of the wires inside. Your <laughs> customer has called you that, oh, come and pick me to this place. But say, Charlie, the man has called me, or oh, that man, he pays a lot. Let me go and come. <laughs> Meanwhile, the wires, the man has nothing. He said, let me just finish it. So let me go and come. <laughs> as soon as you just leave, hmm. the wires that was left over without taping, hmm. now fire. And when fire catches a car, I wonder, how many minutes it will take to burn the whole car? Mm. And fire service is not everywhere. That you think that sometimes you say you call them and they didn't come early. You were even calling somebody else. Maybe assuming I'm sitting here, you are calling me because you know me. I am not fire service. <laughs> when you call me, I now have to call the nearest fire station for you. And that fire that is burning the car will not be waiting for you. Mm. And so mostly if we have vehicles and these problems are in them, let's try our best to send them to they wait patiently for them to rewire them and then tape them nicely for us. Another mm. thing is that we, we, we deal with quack electricians. <laughs> because you go to somebody who will charge and do a good work for you, you don't want, oh, come, come pay. oh I know some man there who knows how to do it. The other time he did so much work for me, he collected only 10 cities. <laughs> but that man has been charging so much. So you turn your back and go to that then man. You there. Then you go there. Now mm. the person connects the chain and will not do the right thing for you. Mm. You will end up doing the wrong thing for you and then you will get to the place. You won't even leave the place and then there will be fire on it. Mm. And so let's always make sure we go to qualified electrician. If you don't have one, ask a colleague who has one. So mm. that the open just get to any roadside, you don't even know. You say, oh, electrician or her. Then they say, yes. Then you just call him to come and check something for you. Mm. Maybe you just try an error and the thing worked and you moved. You thought that is something that is good. Mm. Another thing that I want to talk about is um, overfilling our tank. The white man has made the tank such a way that when you say you are filling your tank, when the fuel attendant puts the machine inside, when it is full, you will hear a sound from the machine. That showing is that it's full. Hmm. Black man says, no, the car belongs to me. Now, we, these days, we even have speed ramps at the uh, pump, the filling stations. You will go and climb, and then it will turn in crowd. <laughs> so I the so driver will be pushing. And top it up. <laughs> will be topping it up, be pushing. When you do that, it is wrong. Hmm. You see, the reason why you don't have to do that is the tank, excuse me, the space made in the tank for is made for evaporation mm. and cooling to take place. <laughs> Hence, when you decide that you want to do you you overcharge it will overcharge in the tank. <laughs> when the, the, the speeding on the highway and the weather is also hot, mm. 
it is likelihood that it can cause fire. The reason is why, because now there is no air for the uh, the, the fuel to breathe in the tank because mm. we fill it with a beam. So mm. at the end of the day, there is no space. Mm. So if you are a passenger and you sit in a car, especially in Ghana here, and the driver decides, it's even wrong for you to be in a car for a driver to go and fill a car. Mm. Passengers should not be in the vehicle before. You must fill your tank before you come and load passengers. Mm. But mostly, they will rather pick the passengers and go and load. Then they will be pushing up and down. <laughs> when it happens that way, it creates a lot of problems. Let's devoid some of these things. If you are in a vehicle and you see something like that, tell the driver that you will not allow him. If it yeah. is for you to give me a light, you just align. Mm. I see uh, Sister Paulina's hands up there. So please, you can... Yes, uh, thank you, Senna. <laughs> you guys are doing a wonderful job out there. So I'm um, talking about the vehicular um, fires and then um, filling of the tank. You know, mm -hmm. our brother has said a lot about it. Mm -hmm. um, there are instances where you realize that some of the cars, their exhaust pipe is actually hanging. <laughs> you know some people use all kinds of things to hold it on mm -hmm. and you know when he mentioned about the the the, the, the bump um the uh, how do you call it um, you kind of say crap is it a speed ramp that the speed hit? ramp exactly you know sometimes you just you just bump on it and then the exhaust will come down and you see it's you know scratching the the street it, 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 is it a cause for fire, a, a, a vehicular fire outbreak sometimes you also realize that the tank is leaking small small there mm -hmm. you know there is wear and tear there is rust around it but mm -hmm. but these um car owners would not take you know notice of it Mm -hmm. What are they doing to, to, to I, I will always talk about education because um, what are they doing to make sure that some of these vehicles are taken off the, of, of, of the streets mm -hmm. because our lives are then in danger? You know, um, I, I don't know, but I sometimes say that some of these things, you see, the police is the people who are on the road. And it is not everything they know about safety. They, their interest is different from what we could have done. Sometimes I always feel, some time back, we had a collaboration with the police MTTD. We are always with them on the road everywhere they are. So they split us into groups. So whatever there is police, you see two firemen. And we are to check and always give education about some of these things. So before, I was even going to add up to something before Paulina came in. You see, sometimes we have locally molded mopless without converters. And that is the exhaust pipe that you are talking about. The exhaust is designed with a certain um, gadget called cocaine. In our local here, we call it cocaine also. So, and it absorbs heat and turn it to vapor. But mm. that is why when you spark your car, uh, maybe always in the morning, you see that vapor and water coming from the uh, exhaust. It reduces fuel consumption as well. Mm -hmm. And then, um, but when, the, uh, when you uh, decide to not to replace it, but to go and mold what, assuming uh, Paulina is also saying, the thing is spoiled, you decide to go to a welder to do one for you. You will realize that even when the, the, the sound of the engine changes and it will continue to consume fuel for you, and it will not have a converter like the white man has done. So the best thing is mostly when those things get faulty, instead of a driver to go and buy another one, he just go to a welder and then the welder will do one and punch the holes into <laughs> it so that it will, the, the sound will be coming out. But you wouldn't get it the way it is. It will consume fuel comparing to the original one that was there. And okay. we can get something to buy. It's just that we always refuse to do that. Hmm. I see Sister Paulina's hand up again, so please, you can... Uh... Okay, so um, because we are still talking about vehicular fires and he made mention of, you know, topping up your tank. Mm -hmm. um, at what times would you advise that um, drivers top up their tanks? Is it in the morning, in the afternoon, in the evening? And then also when you get to the, the, when the filling station, when they want to um, fill the, uh, the bay, where, where they store their, their fuel. At what times should they do it? Should they do it when people are asleep in, deep in the night? Is that when they, they should offload their, their fuel 
or you know so these two parties at what time should the driver tank and at what time should the the the, uh, the filling station you know offload their fuel so uh let me let me start i'm sure michael will come in the town but with the issue about the the fuel when it's even in the morning it's the, there should not be any sun when you are buying fuel. The reason is that when you buy fuel after 9, 10, and the sun is even hot, AM I am talking about, and the sun is out, hmm. sometimes the fuel you buy becomes air. Already fuel is air. So hmm. when you want to buy fuel, between 6 AM to 8 AM, you should be able to buy your fuel. Okay. When you are traveling, you fill your tank. Unless otherwise, where you are going, the fuel is finishing. So you need to top up. No you want to fill your fuel and then travel. Because when you buy fuel in the afternoon and the sun is hot, it is air that they are just filling for you and not fuel. And that is why you will not last there. You tell me you just fill the tank and got finished. Compare the distance you, you drove your vehicle with the fuel that was in it early in the morning when you set off. And mm -hmm. compared to when you bought it in the afternoon, the distance that you travel and the okay. fuel is down. And so mostly it's advisable to buy it either early in the morning or late in the evening. So if from 5.30 to 6, you feel that the weather is down, you can go and buy your fuel. With the issue about uh, the, the fuel tankers, here what we have done is that the fuel tankers, mostly it is either 6 a.m. in the morning or 6 p.m. in the evening. When you do it late in the night, it can cause harm to you. So what we do is that when the time they are discharging fuel here, the fire engines are not enough. Mm. So what they do is that they do it one at a time. So we have about four vehicles. If about four tankers are discharging at various filling stations at Koforidia here, it mm. means that the three vehicles will go and then mm. one tanker will not discharge until okay one is done, then the car will go to that place too, so that when there is anything, we, mm. we can extinguish it. There was a time they decided not to call, because sometimes when they call us that way, they give us something small for fuel, for moving the vehicle to the scene there. And so sometimes they got the little fuel they will give you. Sometimes you may not even need anything. At least just give the fuel to the vehicle. Mm. But they don't want to give you, so they'll end up just hiding to do it. And so they hide one time, and then there was a problem. And so we have to block all vehicles that were coming from Suhu, all vehicles that were going to Accra. So you will have to use Koforidia if you are coming from Kumase through okay. Mount of Mount Fe. Oh, you can because get to Accra. Pick up overnight. And we have to go a distance to stop other vehicles because sometimes some vehicles may be coming to Uruno. Somebody is even in his car and he's smoking cigarettes. Okay, yeah. And when you get to that place, because the gas was just out there. And so any naked fire that the gas meets, it will explode. And we'll have to go within the communities that were around there to tell them to off every, maybe especially those who use charcoal and then oh, uh, mm. firewood. We have to, it, it was a hectic time for us. Mm. So mostly I feel that this that is, is how we do it. Yeah. But I'm sure maybe if Michael knows the standard way that they have to do it, I can't tell. But this is how we do it here. And it has helped us for some time now. I see that Michael wants to say something. So Michael, please go uh, ahead. Uh, yeah. For the question that our sister Paulina asked about when should we fill our tank, hmm. uh, you can, what my brother said is good in the morning or in the evening, but I can say we can fill it at any time, but you put off your engine. Hmm. See, the fire outbreak that we normally have at the filling station, it is not the petrol itself, but it's the vapor. Hmm. The okay. vapor that comes out, you can put a gallon or a drum of petrol there and then dip matches in it. It will not burn. But when the vapor is coming out and you light a matches, it will, it will catch it. That's the most reason we normally advise that you sure. put off your engine. Mm, if the attendant asks you to put off your engine and you said, Mr. Tanenye, the attendant should refuse to fill you. Mm. He asks you to go. Mm. And then when we are to discharge, that is what my brother said. If fire service is not around, what you normally have to do is to at least have more fire extinguishers around in case there's an outbreak, then mm. at least you you, you, you you put it off. Yeah. That's what maybe I have on that 
side of it. But if I'm to add something to it about the courses, mm. we have these bricks, these brick linings. Some mm. may go in for their bricks linings to be changed because it is new. Um, Fantini, like I said, yeah, a team. Mm. So yeah. when you see that smoke coming out, at least you send it to the workshop, at least for them to grind it up a little bit so that mm. it will be loose. But like I said, because it is new, you know, before you realize, but this vehicle bus is normally, these are what normally call. Uh, cause fire fire outbreak to them. This long VVIP buses, this articulated. This is their main problem. Their brakes. These are their main problems. So when we are doing brake lining, at least we should do it in a standard way, not the abnormal mm -hmm. way. No, not yeah, that. You should... Do it in the normal mm -hmm. way. That's it. That's what I. Thank you. I saw uh, Michael Bramford had his hand up. Uh, I don't know if you still want to say something, if you still want to contribute, at least you can go ahead. Michael Bramford. Okay. Uh, I don't know, can you, uh, Cletus, uh, can you give us the last word? I mean, if you want to give us something that we can take home. We, you've said a lot and yeah. It's been so educative, but I don't know if you have something to add up to what's... Um, uh, what I can only add up for now is in all the things that we've mentioned, I'm mm -hmm. sure that our listeners and all those who are viewing us, don't just keep it for yourself. Let's go out there and educate our neighbors who are around us. Some of these things you go in fire service cannot do all. So when you, you are fortunate to be educated on some of these things, you try your best and also give out to others. And uh, like we're talking about the fuel, I expect that when you are buying gas to, you do see, you just go early in the morning and buy your gas and then when you fill it up and that is all. Let's watch out and then have our own safety for ourselves. Mm -hmm. That is all I have for now. Thank you, let's watch out. As our brother said, let's watch out buying gas or and even we that are uh, uh, here uh, the western world we should also try to do better there are people who cook and cook till the food get burned and it, it can also cause fire so we should always try to be careful and uh, michael please you can put your submission across uh to to wrap it up to wrap it up mm -hmm. uh when we are leaving the house we should unplug everything from the sockets mm -hmm. Then that is one. When we are to put off our cell, uh, burners, it should be cylinder first before burner. As I said the last time, cylinder first before burner. And then we should sometimes change our tubes, our hoses on the gas cylinder and then that of the burner. And then any time that we are filling our gas cylinder, we should make sure that rubber seal, the black one, is changed in order not to overload or put some blocks on top of the regulator. Mm -hmm. And then when we come to the sockets, that's where the extension boards, when we are plugging, at least we should leave one port. If it is three ports, we should plug two and leave one for mm -hmm. it to be as an air circulation side. And then, uh, as my brother said, we shouldn't be on the bed and then smoke. We should have a place that we have created in our room for smoke. And we should do some drills in our rooms so that our kids may know that we, in case of fire, there is an exit that we should, and we shouldn't block any exit in our rooms. Mm -hmm. For the windows, the last time I said, we should at least have one passing guard that in case all the doors are locked, that mm -hmm. passing guard alone, you can open it it's also as um, uh, that of uh, uh, the normal uh, this thing that we do to protect ourselves. But that one, you can pull it out like uh, a door. It's something like you can pull it out. So when we do at least, we are, we are having four or five windows, we should make sure one is a passing guard. So that in case of any outbreak, all the doors are locked, you can use that side to as an entrance. And then the last time I said, I'm repeating this again, 
when there's fire outbreak in the room and there's smoke filled up in the room, which is still low, that means be on the floor, you will see all the entrance, you crawl to the gate, you feel it at the back of your palm, then you leave, you open the door, you ask your guard, your children to leave the room, and then you being the last person, you do so and then close the door. We don't think Paulina is my friend, we are neighbors, Paulina has called fire service, no. Pick a phone and then do that on your yes, own. Mm -hmm. And recently, I saw something on T on Facebook. Somebody was saying, "Yeah, fire service for mama, even one one one." No problem. Put the no fire service number is not one one one. It's one nine one. But the person was saying, "Yeah, fire one one one." So I will urge my brother Cletus and then that of Brown for that. Uh, they are in the system. Mm -hmm. They should continue with their fire safety by letting the people know. Their emergency numbers when there's an outbreak of fire. This is what I have for you, and maybe next time we'll delve into a different thing altogether. Thank you, all listeners, and then thank you, all viewers. Now, uh, let me just add up to what my said. Our number is now 112. Okay. 112. Hmm. Yes. One, one, two. The new emergency numbers the vice president gave up, we are now 112. Hmm. So the, the 199 is no more working. Now it's 112. Yes. Okay. Thank you so much. Uh, wonderful listeners. We have come to the end of today's episode. Um, it's been 